Welcome to Two Cents Sharp. We're a couple of trumpet players who sort through the best and worst of the online trumpet community, so you don't have to. Then we give our two cents. Welcome to Gearheads and Pedagags, where we look at examples of people offering questionable advice, claiming absolute truth on subjective matters, and giving unwarranted criticism or commentary. As usual, we must give a disclaimer. Do not go out and find any of these commenters or attack them. Our intention here is to point out and correct questionable behavior, not incite more of it. Our first post is from Trumpets Trumpeters Trumpeting on Facebook. OP asks, please, can anyone help me with the list of trumpet techniques that I need to learn to play professionally? While there's a lot of good advice in this thread, there are some slightly problematic responses. One commenter says, all of them, become a fan of everyone and practice until you sound better than your heroes. Four hours per day. Start with Schlossberg, Clark, and Arben. Bring your A-game to every note. Let's break this down a bit, starting with all of them. While this is true, it's kind of vague and not super helpful. Become a fan of everyone implies you should like every single player you hear, which is definitely not true. In our interview with emerging leader David Cook, he mentioned that you should develop a discerning ear and figure out what sounds good or bad by your opinion. If it doesn't sound good, turn it off. Practice until you sound better than your heroes is a lofty goal and might motivate some people, but ultimately you shouldn't compare yourself to others. Learn how to listen and glean from your favorite players and recordings, but don't measure your success by comparing your progress to anyone else's. Now we reach the super controversial part, four hours per day. We've encountered a lot of opinions on how much time you should spend practicing in a day. Some people have suggested anywhere from one to five hours per day. Who's right? Well, the truth is that you should practice as much as you can practice efficiently. If you're practicing to improve, then only practice as much as you can do so efficiently. For some people, that's one hour, and for some, that's four or more. Most people probably cap out around two to three hours, but figure out what suits you. Of course, if you find you can only practice ten minutes or so a day efficiently, or even not at all, then there are things you can do to work on that, and sometimes should be spent playing just for fun as well. As so many of our emerging leaders have said, Carve out some time just to mess around, as long as you are getting better overall than you're succeeding in your practice. The rest of this comment offers genuinely good advice. Schlossberg, Clark, and Arben are great books to rely on, and you definitely need to give your all in every note. If you're looking to win a professional audition, then leave no room for questions. Even if you miss notes, as long as you miss them with conviction, then you've succeeded. I would say that there's more than just the Schlossberg, Clark, and Arben. If you understand how those work, understand the point of those. I've had professors who only gave etudes instead of studies because etudes, well, not studies, but technical studies, because etudes were really good at developing musicality and also the technical parts of trumpet playing. Right. I guess it just depends on how you learn. Yeah, I I think I would give a three to this guy. There's some good advice in there. But also, you should get advice from various people about like what techniques to use, how long to play. Right. There's There's a lot of people in the thread that say, find a teacher. Yeah, a good teacher would be able to show you the techniques that you need for you specifically to improve. There's no one-size-fits-all program for trumpet. Right. Our next comment from the same post reads, On a daily basis, Clark, Stamp, Arben, Charlier, Biche, Haydn, Carnival of Venice, Hindemith, Artunian, (laughs) (laughs) Hummel, Miles Davis, Improv a lot. The rigor won't hurt you. Keep after it. One commenter replies, That's a very heavy load to put on anyone. Not very good advice. And the first commenter responds with, Barely a couple of hours. Ridiculous to play all of each item, especially if gigging. Here we have an example of the school of thought that you need to practice everything every day. As our second commenter put very well, that is a lot to put on anyone, even if you're a pro. 
You should be working on a variety of techniques every day, but you cannot possibly practice everything every day or even like all of those books every day. Rotate your exercises so you can maintain a balance in your practice. Also, it's worth pointing out that OP asks for a list of techniques, not a list of pieces or books. While the logical next step is to figure out which books are helpful for certain techniques, this comment contains a lot of specific pieces which aren't going to help in the long run. They're all important to learn, but working on a specific piece isn't going to make you better technically. Lots of people fall into this trap, especially at a young age. They'll work on a handful of the same pieces and get them really good, but they end up having difficulty sight reading, learning new rep, or just improving in general. I think the next bit, the rigor won't hurt you, keep after it, is only a little true. Dedication and self-discipline are definitely necessary for long-term improvement, but if someone followed the instructions in this comment at face value, they would definitely blow their chops in like five minutes. Learn when to put the horn down or take it easy for a bit. Funnily enough, the commenter seems to have backpedaled a bit when they called out, oh, barely a couple of hours, ridiculous to play all of each item. I would have included that in the original comment. That's an important distinction to make. Yeah. I would say, I mean, personally, I think that any method book can achieve the same results if you learn to use the materials within properly. Right. Like, you could do so much with just a chromatic scale. Right. And, of course, as we discussed in the last post, a good teacher will help you learn how to do those things. Yeah, it's it really is incredibly subjective. I would give this, this commenter, like, a two... Oh, really? That low? Maybe a three. Like, it's actually more likely to injure somebody who doesn't know what they're doing than the first commenter. That's true, I guess. Yeah. And, like, if this person is trying to, like, incre increase their techniques and they're going to Facebook for help, they're definitely, like, they don't know what they're doing. Right. And this this person is from somewhere where there's really no teachers around. So Facebook is probably one of the only resources they have. Yeah, that was that commenter is setting this person up for like serious long term injuries. Yeah. I know they mean well. Like both of these guys, I know they mean well. It's just like, and we're also not anti method book either. No, you can get a lot of good things out of method books. You just have to know how to take out the good things, because the method book is written for the person who wrote the method book. So if you play like that person or you played like they did before they started using those methods or whatever, yeah, it's going to do a lot of good things for you. But if you don't play like that, if your problems are not being addressed by the method book, nothing's going to happen for you. Right. If, like, at best, nothing's going to happen for you. And at worst, you're going to hurt yourself or get bad habits. Right. Learn Learn the why behind the exercises and then go one step further. Our second post also comes from Trumpets Trumpeters Trumpeting. Nathan Ost posted a video of his miniature A2 number 9 performed by Ellen Schnagel. Many of the comments were congratulatory, and rightfully so. She sounded great. But about, but about half the comments were taken up by this exchange. After congratulating Ellen, one commenter, who we'll call Commenter 1, proceeds to link to a video of Tina Ting Helseth performing the third movement of the Homo Concerto saying, please get this piece. I would love to hear her play it. This on its own isn't too bad. We're going to assume the best in this person and not say that they posted this recording just because both performers here are women and also blonde. However, it goes downhill from here. Oh my. Commenter 1 links to another performance of the third movement of the Hummel by Wynton Marsalis, saying, for absolute sound, this is my fave. Too bad it's an old video. Now we're getting into the territory of unnecessarily comparing trumpet players. If it were just the above comment, we probably wouldn't be talking about this post right now. But now Commenter 1 is starting to distract from the content of the post itself. Enter Commenter 2 with another recording of the third movement of the Homo by Maurice André with the caption, Here's the master himself. Now we're just getting distracted. Commenter 2 posts yet another recording of the same piece by Selena Ott, praising her for winning the ARD contest. 
Nothing inherently harmful is being done by posting these videos here, but we are now up to four recordings of the Hummel in a row here on a post about something completely different. Common Tutu proceeds to post two more recordings of different sections of the Hummel by different players. We are now up to six video links, and at the time of writing this episode, there are only 13 comments. That's basically half the comments on this post talking about something completely unrelated. Down below, commenter 3 puts it very well. Everyone has heard the Hummel many times. How about more Ost? Have these people ever heard anything other than the Hummel? I don't know. They, they must be a part of that, like, symphony audience that asks for the same three classical pieces on loop every season. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, these recordings are just so famous. Yeah, they're good. But, like, A, keep looking for more. B, re irre irrelevant. <laughs> I'm sure this isn't a universal thing, but for the most part, if somebody is at that level of playing, they probably have heard or seen or played the Hummel before. You don't need to bring it up. Right. So this whole interaction, what kind of rating would we get it? It's not harmful. It's just incredibly stupid. I'm going to give it like a four. It's not bad, bad, but I just... I think they got caught up in their little mini interaction, and I don't think it was 100% coming from a good place. I'm really suspicious that the original commenter didn't just link it because they're like, oh, she's a blonde girl, and Tina Ting is a blonde girl, so obviously they play all the same music in the same style. Yeah, we never explained our scale. Just go to the other episode if you <laughs> listen to our last episode we explain it in like the first two minutes in fact listen to all our episodes right here on anchor fm or spotify or youtube or wherever you find your podcasts hopefully eventually and if you're still not clear 10 10 is good one is bad no one is the least brass holy what 10 is the worst since so well this isn't just like with our our slash Oh, well, shoot. I thought, oh man, I thought here like 10 was like supreme pedagog and one was not a problem, but now I see how that's... Okay, now you're... In my mind, I'm like, man, you're going super hard on these guys. No. Oh. No, it's just like the last scale. One is the nicest, 10 is the meanest. Okay. Now we're going to change gears and switch over to something we call the Emerging Leaders Spotlight. This is a segment where we feature trumpet players in the dawn of their careers who are not only talented musicians, but a force for good in the trumpet community. This segment is inspired by the late Ryan Anthony, who championed the idea that as musicians, we should also be positive and welcoming people. The musicians we feature are leaders in this initiative and we are excited to see what they will continue to do for the music and trumpet communities in the future. This week's emerging artist is Sarah Jessen. Sarah Jessen is a student at the Curtis Institute of Music, where she studies with David Bilger. She has previously attended the Music Academy of the West, and this past summer was a fellow at the Tanglewood Music Center. She has also substituted with the Philadelphia Orchestra and the Orchestre Symphonique de Montréal, and will be performing with Serif Brass in an upcoming tour this fall. wanted to play the trumpet because my dad played um, and my mom said I couldn't because it was too loud so I started on flute hated it and then I went to piano and I also hated that and eventually they let me play trumpet I both love the people I meet who are also students and are my peers but I also have such admiration and respect and like great bonds with my teachers Thing I'm most grateful in the trumpet community is the ability to like be competitive, however, also support one another in a healthy way because they don't have to be mutually exclusive. All of us have a 
little bit more accepting and receptive of other musical ideas across the board, and then we can come to more compromises in our playing and play together better. I love playing for the community and I love trying to make music much more accessible and more casual because I think that's one of the biggest barriers we have right now. Thank you so much to Sarah for her time and thoughts. We had lots of fun chatting with you. All the music in this episode was provided by Sarah Jessen. The intro and outro music is from the Pulchinella Suite by Igor Stravinsky. And the Emerging Leaders music is 12 Romances, Opus 21, Number 7, How Fair This Spot by Sergei Rachmaninoff. You can hear more from Sarah on her Instagram at Sarah Sometimes Practices. Thank you for listening. We hope to see you next week. And remember, always play two cents sharp.